as you all know, I was stuck in Italy for like three months. They just didn't let me come back because they didn't accept the documents of this ugly guy over here. I have realized that yes, you do adore when I make super complicated stuff, but you end up remaking my tutorials when it's more simple things. Duh. And selfishly, I do want to see you making some DIYs. So I decided I'm going to try to make a few more simple tutorials. So what we're going to do today is this rug mirror. It was sent to me from Ludovica on Instagram. It was super cool. And I had no idea how to make it because I never made a rug, but then I figured it out how to do it without having a gun. Step number one is literally to draw. You have to first of all figure out how big is the mirror that you're gonna buy because the frame that you're gonna build around your mirror has to capture the mirror inside. Otherwise, it's not gonna hold and we have to hide the edges of the square, rectangle, circle, whatever your mirror is. With this project, you can be as creative as you want and try any single shape you want. But I suggest you to sketch it on a paper before trying. I decided to make one really wiggly shape and then drew three different options for the inside. One that was simply two colors, one that had lines inside that created squares like this one, just drawing vertical lines. And a final option that instead was like camouflage, mimetic, using three different colors and mixing them in one, just drawing little wiggle curves inside the shape itself. That's what you end up having at the end. So I am gonna go for this one, but simply because it's the one that I saw the last online and the least online, and I thought it looked a bit cooler. But I have to say that I adore even this one where all the color mix, and plus in this one there's three colors. You can actually add as many as you want, even a hundred, like this one over here. Now, we should buy some wood in order to make a frame and then go and stick the material around it, but I think it's a lot cheaper and easier if you just buy a painting frame, deattach this part over here, and put the fabric on top. Yes, we all know that I'm so stingy, it hurts, and so I think that you can buy frames for like $5 and said if you would have to buy the wood, the staples, put it together, it will cost more. So just deattach the corners so that you can break the X that is in the middle, and then rebuild it together and you have the perfect frame. Basically, the reason that we destroyed everything is because we do not want the X at the center of our frame because we have to go and poke all inside the fabric and that would not give us enough mobility, flexibility. It's way easier without. Once you get rid of the original canvas, you take out this thing that is called monk cloth and it's a fabric on which you can go and pinch your rug. Then once you have the perfect frame, you just go and take out your projector to make the drawing on top. For all the normal people with absolutely normal equipment at home, so no projector and no fancy stuff, I'm gonna show you that you can totally do it by hand. Obviously, it's gonna require some math and you have to calculate how big your mirror is. Draw the shape of your mirror in the middle and once you know where you do not want to leave emptiness, so we're gonna draw inside of this so that we're covering every piece of the mirror and all the outside of the mirror, perfectly, we can go and draw our shape. You can see that I have the sketches on the side and I just go and copy all the outside of the mirror shape and then I will go and create the same wiggle effect inside the rectangle of mirror that I created in advance. Once I have this, I will create also the second line so that I can draw the vertical, horizontal lines that are gonna create the squares on our shape, and you're done. You just choose which color making one color, which square making the other color, and we're ready to go and pinch it. You see, no projector, no fancy equipment, and we can still follow the drawing and the squares that we have to pinch. Now throw on a fancy dress and run downstairs because your bestie decided it was a great idea to come and pick you up on a bird. You know this electric scooters? Yes, a bird. To go to a wedding. So we just rode all the way to the wedding on high heels and a fancy dress. And that was fun. Let's pass to the practical stuff. What you need to buy is this it's a hand punch needle and inside the package you're gonna find this little thingy over here we are gonna insert it in the hole here on the bottom and from there up once it comes out from the other side you get the yarn and push it inside 
super simple. You pull out the metallic thread that pulls out the yarn and you are set and ready to go. You make your first hole on your fabric and then from the bottom side you take out the yarn so that it wiggles on the bottom and you're ready to follow the entire drawing. You just have to follow the lines that you drew already on the fabric. Super simple, I told you. The only rule of this game is actually there's two rules. Number one is to always keep the opening of your needles towards the direction that you're going. You keep following the same identical drawing. I prefer to do all the outline of the outside and then slowly go towards, towards the inside. I decided to film from the bottom because I never understood what happens on the other side. You see, this fluffy things stay on the opposite direction of where you're drawing. So keep in mind that if you're drawing a text, you should do it backwards. A really important thing to do is to unravel your yarn and leave a lot of spare because otherwise, if it's tight, every time you're going inside, you're basically pulling them out vice versa. And you do not want to waste all your precious time. Put your favorite series on and relax in the process of this thing. It's basically like knitting. I never done that, but they all told me that it's super relaxing. And I have to say that I really enjoyed the process of this. You don't even have to focus too much. You can chit chat, you can have your friends over, you can watch a series. Just go ahead and follow the drawing and slowly go towards the inside. Super simple. What happens when you finish a square is exactly as you started, you leave the tingling thread on the opposite direction of your pinching. Oh, guys, this is the most important rule of all. Before you finish this thing, you have to put it in a safe, high place because the threads come out so easily. I had to start all over again because this guy destroyed everything. Deep breath in and accept that your dog has no fault and it's your fault for not putting it in a safe place. Now, let's see how to mix the two colors together. Once you did one section of the carpet, you are gonna go with the second color exactly like the first one, pinch inside, pull the yarn on the other side, and then go and do the outlines before you go in the insides. You're not gonna go towards the blue sections, they're gonna mix a little bit, but we're gonna fix it later. And once you did the outside as clean as possible, you just go slowly to the inside. This is gonna take you around three days to do a mega huge mirror and then you're gonna be exhausted. I never want to see this again in my life. Okay, it's happening! Two million years later, we are done. If you turn it upside down, you're gonna see that it's full of threads on this side, so we're gonna go and cut them out, trim it a little bit. <laughs> Look how fluffy it is. Take a break to go and open to the postman that delivered your electric scooter because it was too much fun the other night and you need to buy your personal one. And now put it away because we actually do need the cardboard. Going back to topic, we're gonna go and trim away all the exaggerated threads falling out of our rug till it becomes all nice and smooth. <clears throat> so now you take out the instrument that you threw out from your window thinking you had completely finished with it and we are gonna go and separate the two lines of the colors so that the line comes out all straight and neat. As you can see over here, it doesn't matter how straight or how professional you are, the colors are gonna mix a little bit, but it's no problem because you take out this and you go and separate them. Let's go and see a little bit closer what is happening. You basically just pull all the threads of one color to one direction, all the threads of another color to the opposite direction. I'm gonna show you that at the end, it's a crazy difference. It takes just a few minutes and it gives an effect like, look at the left, look at the right, so much cleaner. Time to take your rug off the frame and actually put it on top of your mirror. Cut away everything, but it was becoming already too long this video, so I decided to use some magic to skip you some time. And once you cut away the inside and the outside, you are gonna go and make some vertical little cuts all around the fabric that you did leave, like two, three extra centimeters. Yeah! So I told this to myself like a hundred times, but this time we're really, literally almost done. We just have to get our carpet that now looks like a floppy floppy thing, and we stick it on our cardboard. At this point, we're supposed to take out a very specific glue uh, that you put on the back of the rug. But in this case, since we're sticking it on a carpet, it's not so important and any kind of glue will do. And we're gonna go and stick the little extra flips of the fabric on top of the carpet. I'll show you. 
Shake your spray glue, shake your spray glue, and then go and put it in all the desired sections that you need of your rug. We're doing all this upside down, guys, fundamental, it's upside down. We don't wanna make sticky the section that we are gonna actually see. You do it on the interior part. So we're gonna flip all the sections of the fabric on top of the yarn. And also we are gonna spray the glue on the central part that is not covered with fabric, but it's gonna make sure that the yarn does not slip through and the accident that happened with my dog cannot happen again because it sticks together. Once you did this on all the external side and all the internal side, we're gonna have all the borders all nice and neat and we're not gonna see any more. The sections is gonna turn around itself and become all nice and neat and perfect. Oh, such a nice and professional work. Now turn it around and squash it all nice and straight. You don't have to iron it, just squash it all nice and straight. You still have some glue on it that is gonna keep it straight. And then you take out a marker and go and draw all the outside and all the inside so that we know how to cut our cardboard. It's a super simple step like always. That's why I'm saying that this tutorial is for beginners. Anybody can do it. And then you know what to go and cut out in your cardboard. Once you drew it all out, just take out your scissors and your magic effects and cut it out like this. Boom! There you go! And now, we make a sandwich. This means we're gonna put first the rug, then the cardboard, then the mirror, close them together with super glue. You can use for the step super glue, you can use your hot glue gun, you can actually still use your spray foam glue for gluing the cardboard to the rug. But after you made this step, you're also gonna have to glue identically also the mirror on the back of your cardboard. And for that one, you for sure need the hot glue gun or a super glue. Anyway, we get our cardboard, we stick it on the rug. And once we did this first step, we are gonna go and add more glue on the back so that we can glue the mirror on top and then put something heavy on top to keep it in place and to let it dry in the right position. guys. The tutorial is over. Oh, okay, so mirror is done. I'm super excited. It looks so cool. Literally like a piece of art. It could be hanging around a museum. Yes, I know. But before I show you the result, don't forget to subscribe. Leave me a comment if you liked it or even if you want to suggest me what to do next time because as you know, I do all your requests. Almost. If I know how to figure them out. Let's see the result. And yes, absolutely, you can hang it on your wall. Because I used an IKEA mirror, it comes with the little clips on the back. So you're just gonna have to place them on the back of the mirror, not on the cardboard, on the mirror, because that's the resistance part, and clip it on your wall. Super simple, and it's gonna look super stylish. Your selfies are gonna look amazing.